today. Rain down. that are in expectation. Uh, we have an expectancy uh, that you're about to do something uh, that is unique in us today. Uh, we have an expectancy uh, that this word uh, is about to shift us today. Uh, we have an expectancy uh, that the miracles that we've been praying for, uh, they'll be released today. Uh, we have an expectancy uh, that Father, you're going to do uh, exactly what you came to do. Uh, we have an expectancy uh, that when we leave out of this place today, uh, we will leave out healed. Uh, we have an expectancy uh, that this word today uh, is about to give us uh, an enlightenment uh, and an empowerment uh, that we've never had before. Uh, come on, people of God. Uh, let your expectancy rise. Uh, let your expectancy rise. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, let your expectancy rise. Uh, we expect you, God. Uh, we expect you. Uh, we expect to hear you. Uh, we expect to experience you. Uh, we expect to encounter you. Uh, we expect to be set free. Uh, we expect to be delivered. Uh, we expect provision. Uh, we expect Back to you today, God. Hard shake it in a monsicle. Rick it him on a man city, man say. We expect you, Father, to have your way. Have your way. That's it, family. Come on, throw your hands up and say, Lord, have your way. We're on one accord. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Hallelujah. Do what you want to do. Have your way. We thank you, God. We love you, Father. We honor you in this house today. We thank you that something is about to happen for your people that has never happened before. A supernatural breakthrough shall happen today. What happens in this house today is about to affect the rest of our year. So we say thank you in advance, hallelujah. Come on, can we give God thank you in advance? Your supernatural breakthrough, hallelujah. You made it to the right place at the right time, hallelujah. I wanna be the first to say congratulations. You just hit your breakthrough season. Bell Perizim, the Lord of the breakthrough is here and he's about to break through. He's about to break through. He's about to break through, hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. And our commitment today is we will worship and praise you the way you deserve. The way you deserve is how we will lift you up in this house today. And we open ourselves up to the spirit of Christ. Spirit of truth, speak in this house today. We thank you and we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Hallelujah. Everybody that's in expect expectation, come on, jump to your feet. Open up your mouth and just release a loud shout right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it, family. It's a whole bunch of worshipers in here today. A whole bunch of praises. I hear you and I see you. Come on, come on. Give God a shout of praise. He's taking us higher into praise and worship. Come on, continue to shout. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and shout unto the Lord. With the voice of triumph, thank you, Jesus. Come on and be thankful unto Him, hallelujah, and begin to bless His holy name, hallelujah, for He is God, hallelujah. Come on, one more time, would you shout in the room, hallelujah? Hey! Come on, hallelujah, would you shout one more time in the room? Open up your mouth with all that within you somebody and shout glory glory we want him to be glorified hey we want him to be glorified in this house hallelujah glory to God come on say it be glorified come on that's right say it be glorified hallelujah thank you Jesus come on put your hands together right here Yeah. 
The storm is passing over. I can see the sun peeking through the clouds. The storm is passing over. It won't be long now. It won't be long now. It won't be. It won't be long. It won't be long. You waited. You prayed. You fasted. It won't be long now. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing.
lifted hands. you were praying in vain. You thought you were worshiping in vain. You thought you were coming in vain. But God is not slack concerning his promise. God is not slack concerning his promise. God is not slack concerning his promise. God is not slack concerning. It will be long. We bless you even before you do it. Hallelujah. Now somebody give God a hand clap of praise right there. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. In the room we sing glory to the name. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Find your posture. Glory Find your posture of worship. Find your posture of praise. Glory, glory to. Yeah. 
consistent because there's nobody like him. Nobody like him. Hey. Nobody like him. Yeah. Hey. Sing glory. Glory. Glory.
you're right there. You're right there. Come on, you're right there. Come on, you're right there. Press a little bit further. Come on, press a little bit further. You're right there. Come on, you're right there. Come on, you're almost there. Come on, you're almost there. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh. I made it, I made it, I made it, I made 
it. I gotta give him the glory because I'm You ain't got to go three years. Some of you ain't got to go two years. Some of you just stole last night. If I could be the prophet of the Lord, you said, Lord, if you don't help me, I don't know if I can make it, but I got news for you. You made it into the house of God. You made it, and your breakthrough is here. Somebody open up your mouth and support that man. Oh, I feel a miracle in this room. We certainly thank God, amen, for our founders and overseers. Come on, put your hands together for the chief apostle, Apostle Paul L. Beer. And he let Lady Dr. Donna Beer. You can do better than that while you're climbing. Put your hands together for the best senior pastors on this side of heaven. Apostle Cordero D. Beer. And Lady Chai is in the house. Come on, put your hands together for mom and dad beard in the house. Lady Quinitria Hill is in the house. Guess what, DP? DP Nation Panel is in this house. Make some noise. We welcome you to DP Nation Panel, where our passion is people. Would you please now turn your attention to the screen? Hey family, I'm Apostle Cordero Beard. And I'm Lady Jessica Beard, and we would like to welcome you to DP Nation Pedal. And we're so very excited about what God is getting ready to do in this place today. So we hope that you are ready because this is about to be an experience like none of them. Hey. about our new DP Nation app. And guess what? It's free. And 
it's available now on all of your Apple and Android devices. So head on over and download it now. And let's stay connected. God will affirm because he watches over his word to perform it. But you do not become skilled simply waiting till you get to church in front of people to act like it. Skill is developed when nobody's there. And come on, am I talking to anybody? Skill is the, it's your willingness to put in the work when nobody is watching you. If you think that your calling will exempt you from work, you are in the wrong mood, baby. I have, I have. You got to say, Lord, I don't understand it, but I believe you. I don't understand it. I can't make no sense out of it. I've been fighting with it for the last few months. I can't make heads or tails, but one thing I do, I believe God. Anybody in here ever had to walk by faith and not by sight? Come on here. Shout glory, shout glory, shout Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout glory. Amen. So, amen. This week we're going to be live here Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. Amen. Celebrating this awesome man and woman of God. Come on. We should be standing on our feet. Amen. We should be standing on our feet all over this building. Amen. We're going to be celebrating them on this week. Amen. And as you saw in the video, amen, Thursday night opening up is going to be none other than Prophetess Cecilia Matthews. Amen. She's going to be in the house. Amen. And then Friday night is going to be her husband, Bishop R.J. Matthews, is going to be in this house. And being closing out is going to be the founder and overseer of Dominion and Power Family Life Center International, the chief apostle. Amen, Apostle Paul L. Beard. Look at your neighbor and say revival. Oh, y'all, I know y'all can talk louder than that. Come on, somebody shout revival. You got to say it like the preacher said, revival is here. Amen, so it's not just going to be your ordinary pastoral anniversary. Come on, but revival is here. Amen. Amen. Now, amen. We know, we already know, amen, that we have to do, amen, our contributions. Amen. We want to put our money where our mouth is. Ain't that right? Amen. So we're going to, so look at your neighbor and say, have you made your contributions today? You can do it today. You can do it this week. Amen. Come on, put your hand together. Amen. We know that we're asking everyone to sow that hundred dollar seed. Amen. God told me that this was not just a love offering. Amen. But that he was going to give something back to his people. Somebody shall double compensation. Amen. I believe that God is about to give you double compensation. Amen. But look at your name and say, you got to sow this seed. Amen. You can do that today. Amen. If you're giving through the app, remember, amen, to put Amen. YA appreciation. That stands for Young Apostle Appreciation. Amen. If you're giving a cash app, amen. Also, amen. Make it out. Amen. It's in the memo section, Young Apostles Appreciation. Amen. There will be no word study Tuesday. Amen. In preparation. Amen. For this week. Amen. So those of you that will be serving, we will still meet here at 7 o'clock. 
Amen. We're just going to make sure that the building is prepped. Amen. And ready for this awesome celebration. Amen. So I want you to join. Amen. Myself here. I will be here. Amen. At 7 p.m. Amen. Won't be here long. We're just going to make sure. Amen. That everything is everything. Everything is in its proper place. Amen. Amen. For those, amen, of you, amen, your children that are participating, amen, in the Resurrection Sunday, amen, the dance team, amen, we will have dance practice this Saturday, March the 12th at 10 a.m., and then another practice will be March 26th at 10, 10 a.m., amen, everybody, understand that's going to be this Saturday, amen, and then March 26th at 10 a.m., amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's giving time. It's giving time. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And I like someone in two. Amen. A place that I can see the growth. Amen. And we see what God is doing here. We still have a lot more to do, a lot more to, amen, accomplish. But amen. This is good ground. Somebody shout, this is good ground. Amen. Those of you that are giving electronically, the ways to give are on the screen. Amen. If you're not giving electronically, if you have cash, the men of God will come and serve you. I'm so excited about our new series. Amen. Somebody shout Air Force One. Amen. I'm excited to hear what this series is all about. There is a word in this house with my name on it. Amen. Somebody ought to make that declaration. There's a word in this house with my name on it. Amen. Don't play with me now. Don't play with me now. Don't play with me. Amen. I'm excited. We're going to pray for the offering. Father, we thank you now for every seed that's sown. We pray for those God who had a desire in their hearts to give God but could not give God. We pray that every seed, amen, meet every need and overflow in Jesus' name. Amen. How many ready to go deeper? Amen. Well, would you stand on your feet all over this building? Amen. As we go deeper into worship and then the next voice you will hear will be that of our uh, senior pastor, Apostle Cordero D. Beer. Anybody thankful for the blood? Come on, is anybody really thankful for the blood of Jesus? Glory to God.
for the blood. Soul. 
Give up your mind. Give up your spirit in this moment. Somebody call upon him. Call upon him. Call upon him. Come on, that's power in that name. That's healing in that name. Breakthrough is in that name. Deliverance is in that name. We get ready to move, but listen, I just want to check the post. If the audience today, listen, if God ain't never done nothing for you, do me a favor and please be seated. If he ain't done nothing, if he ain't woke you up this morning, if he ain't sought you up on your way, please be seated. But if you in this building and know that nobody did it but God, that nobody healed you but God, that nobody kept you from God, jump up on your happy feet and for about 30 seconds, praise God that he kept your mind. Praise him that he kept you. Come on, from baby seen and unseen. Praise God. Some of you in here, you look wonderful. But if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, somebody declared, where would I be? I'd have been in jail. I'd have been in hell. I'd have been in the same asylum. But you ought to be thankful. Like told in the sanctuary, you ought to be thankful that God gave you another chance. Somebody at the count of three, you ought to call on the name that's got power, that's got dominion. Somebody Shout one, two, three. Come on, call on the name. I said, somebody call on the name. They told me that power is in the name. What about breakthrough is in the name? Look at somebody and tell them my healing is in that name. And they used to tell me that the more they call the name, the better they would get the feel. Come on. Somebody in this building, you ought to have an understanding that the Apostle Paul said, there was nothing wonderful that i done. But the Apostle Paul said that I am who I am simply by the grace of God. If that's you in this building, that know that since you've been saved, you ain't crossed every T since you've been saved. You ain't dotted every I since you've been saved. He done been better than you than you've been to yourself. Somebody here ought to turn around one time and decree and declare that that's what God is doing in my life. Somebody said that he picked me up, turned me around, and he placed my feet on the solid ground. If that's you and he'll wave my mind to yesterday, my mind to sorrows. Somebody open your mouth one more time and shout glory. It's in the house. It's in the house. So thankful unto God today. Whisper, tell somebody that he gave me another chance. God can do anything I told you except for fail. Millions did not make it. But whisper to somebody and tell them, I'm one of the ones that did. And the fact of the matter is, is that no matter how wonderful you are, no matter how many times, drama, you've been to church, symbols, please. It ain't your goodness, no goodness of your own that have brought you to this place. But we thank God that even when we was not faithful, that he was faithful to us. What did God do? He looked beyond my faults and he saw all of my needs. And for that, nobody has to beg me to worship. Nobody has to beg me to praise. Everybody in this building, if I pass this microphone around this church, you'd have a testimony that didn't nobody do it but God. 2007, there was a tombstone with my name on it. But you know what? God had to tell the Paul Barrows to counsel the funeral because the body ain't coming. Look at somebody and tell them I got so many things to thank God for so many things to honor him for so many things songwriter declared that if I had 10,000 hands that would be enough if I had 10,000 feet
10,000 tongues wouldn't be enough to tell him thank you. Somebody just lift your hands, give a wave offering unto God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord, we appreciate you. Yes, Lord, we give your name the glory. We give your name the honor in this place. Lord, you'll be glorified from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same sun. Jesus, you're worthy to be praised. Yes, Lord. Lord, as the deer, panted after the water brooks, so does our soul long for you. Lord, I have an understanding that you want to do something supernatural today. And whatever you do, don't let religion get in the way of what you want to do in me. Come on, somebody say amen. God seeketh such to worship him. There are benefits for the worshipers. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. And we appreciate you. We glorify you in this place. While your hands are extended, put those same hands together. Amen for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are thankful. Amen for the Holy Trinity. Amen today. Also, amen, we give honor where honor is due, custom to whom custom is due, and tribute to whom tribute is due. Amen. We thank God for none other than the chief apostle, founders, and overseers of this wonderful work. Come on, somebody, stand on your feet. Let's give honor where honor is due. Thank God, amen, for Chief Apostle Paul L. Beard. Amen, the lovely elect lady Donna Beard. God bless you. Bless them, amen. We thank God for mom and dad Beard. Y'all turn around and say hey to the people. Y'all y'all turn around and wave. My God. Listen, they lovely. Granddaddy got his vest on, y'all. They matching, amen, in this place. My God, we thank God. Amen for mom and dad. Y'all, they make us look good. Do you hear me? Amen. I appreciate God. Amen for them. Thank God that the heels are in this house. Amen. Put your hands together. Amen for Pastor Jantrell L. Hill. Amen. Wonderful assistance. Amen. Thank God also for Lady Quinetria Hill. Amen. Is in this building. Thank God. Amen. Pastor Reynolds. Amen. Have joined us today. God bless you. Thank God for Lady Reynolds and her absence. We bid you Godspeed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What about putting your hands together for yourselves? Come on, put your hands together. Y'all can do better than that. I'm talking about clap your hands for yourself. Amen. I can still hear Pastor Hill saying, you made it. Amen. Congratulations. You made it. Thank God. Amen. For the maestros. Amen. Praise and worship leader. God bless you. Amen. Appreciate God for your contribution to this service. Amen. There's a word from the Lord. If you have your Bible, lift your Bible above your head. Amen. If you have your Bible, lift it above your head. Amen. And repeat after me and say, everything is going down but the word of God. This time, say it like you mean it. Say, everything is going down but the word of God. We have an understanding, amen, that the flowers may fade and the grass do wither, but the word of God, amen, shall abide. Somebody say forever. Amen. If you are an individual that's looking for advice of any kind, amen, the advice I would give unto you is to cleave a hole to the word of God in this time like never before. I say it all the time. It was Job that said that I esteemed the word of God more highly than my necessary food. Amen. So we thank God for the word. We understand that Jesus said that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. Come on, somebody that's spoken. Shall every man live. Amen. This word is alive, and we appreciate God that we're not under a dead letter, but open your mouth and say we're under a living word. Amen. I have a task and a charge. Amen. To man, the
minister a message, amen, into the ears of the listeners, amen, today. Welcome to March, amen. In March, we have a new series, and the title of our series is Air Force One. Look at somebody and say Air Force One, amen. As I look around the room today, amen, the heels, they on point. Listen, both up, Gwen and Rock, and they Air Force Ones. Amen. The Meekin said it'd be a good time to, you know, maybe one of these Sundays we all should wear our Air Force Ones. I said, you're going to go out and make somebody spend $90, amen, to get them shoes. I said, we, we, the tithing record may be down that Sunday, amen, but we all going to be on one accord. Do you hear me? <laughs> amen. We thank God, amen, for this series. But when I think about the word Air Force One, thank you, uh, it, it, it is not nothing that. God laid this on my heart, and this has nothing to do, amen, with a tennis shoe. Nothing. Amen. This series has nothing to do with the tennis shoe, Air Force One. Amen. It's on the screen, my God. Amen. Also, whenever it is that you think about Air Force One, some people think about the, the office of the president. We understand that he rides around on the ground in a bulletproof what they like to call motorcade. But whenever he's in flight, amen, the name of the president's uh, jet is Air Force One. But I'm going to talk to you today that before there was a tennis shoe, before there was, amen, a, a little private jet, uh, there was God. Okay? And I want to let you know that as it relates to the world in which we're living in, uh, everything was made, shaped, formed, fashioned by the power, somebody say, of a spoken word. Yeah, God was the ultimate force in the air that causes everything to move. Can I just brag on God? Y'all going to make me do it by myself. But that's all right. If I don't get one hand clap, one applause, that's all right. As long as heaven would applaud this word, I'm good with that. But I want to let you know that the ultimate power, the ultimate force in the air that's running and moving everything, it has a name. And the ultimate air force one, his name is God. God is so bad. Whisper to your neighbor. And I'm not going to allow you to get on they nurse, but whisper to them one more time if you don't like them, you know you shouldn't have sat beside them, whisper to your neighbor and say neighbor, oh neighbor God made everything God is so bad, somebody say how bad is he he stepped out of nowhere and nowhere became somewhere simply because he was there God is so bad come on, I say God is so bad somebody say how bad is he God is so bad that he spoke the sun, the sun he, he slung the silver stars in their, stock, their, their sockets and I want to let you know that God ain't never had to call a repair bill because the sun couldn't come on at 6 a.m. That's how bad he is. He, God is so bad. Somebody shout, how bad is he? My God, he spent the world one time and it's still spinning today. God is so bad that he made a, come on, y'all ain't gonna talk it here. God is bad. If God can make a brown cow eat green grass and produce white milk look at somebody and tell him surely he can take your sour situation and make it sweet I come to tell somebody that you serve a bad God God don't play second fiddle to nobody I'm trying to let you know that everything that is moving that is breathing is moving and breathing and operating by the power of God come on don't you know that a bug can't live without God that same bug can't die without God. God is running everything. But if God is running everything, what is the devil running? The devil ain't running nothing but his mouth. God come on somebody. It's the man that's got all power. He I'm not the president. He omnipotent. I come to tell you that the devil can't be everywhere at the same time. It ain't but one being. Come on somebody that looks up high. That sits up high and looks down low. The Bible says that God's eyes run to and fro. Come on, seeking the good and the bad. It wasn't Santa Claus. It ain't St. Nicholas. Only one person know who's nine. 
somebody is making a listen, checking it twice, who knows who's nodding and who's not. Look at somebody and tell them it's God. And when I get done with you today, when you leave out of this building, you're not going to complain. You're not going to give credit to the devil. Not another day in your life because you get me to find out that when it comes down to God, come on somebody, that the devil ain't nothing. And guess what? When you get in your right place and occupy your right space, then guess what? That same devil got to be under your foot too. Somebody open up your mouth and say, young apostle, I want you to preach and teach to us about the real Al Force. One. Air Force One. There are some people, they at times face turbulence. Bishop, if you don't mind, mute the ox for me uh, uh, and the keyboard. There are some people uh, that face turbulence from time to time. Well, find yourself in a place, y'all sit down, y'all going to make me preach, uh, called spiritual warfare. There's some people that are so afraid of the devil until uh, they don't know what kind of power he possesses, what can he do, and what he can't do. I told you that if you're going to be successful in defeating your adversary, and I did say your adversary, if you're going to be successful at defeating your adversary, then guess what? We've got to understand the power of God. I told you that uh, God told me some time ago, and I'm almost out of here, is that the reason why the church is defeated in spiritual warfare is because we do not have a boxer's mentality. I told you that a boxer, I'm getting ready to get the devil off of somebody here today. I told you that a boxer don't never enter the ring with an opponent that they have not studied for at least six months. You don't know what the devil can do, and you don't know what he can't. I'm reminded of a story that one time uh, God sought out a man. That was a man that this man, he was one of the most prominent men in a place called Oz. His name was Job. He was faithful unto God, right? But Job was living his whole life on one level. But God desired Job to go to another level. And instead of, y'all call him the devil, I call him the level. Instead of, uh, come on somebody, he calling uh, 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 for Job, uh, a little private jet, he called the devil. You already know, I'm going to preach in a minute, that God had a plan if he asked the devil a question that he already knew the answer to. Look at God running game on the devil. What did he ask him? He said, Satan, where you going? He know everything. He said, then where you come from? He said, I've been uh, going up and down the earth, walking to and fro in it, seeking to whom I may devour. Y'all talk like you read your Bible sometimes. The devil didn't know nothing about Job. How did the devil get to Job's house? Watch this. God sent him over there. God sent the devil to Job's house uh, 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 because he had a plan for Job. And Job could not get to the next level without the devil. And some of you, after I get done, you may thank God for the devil. Y'all say this preacher done lost his mind early. When you really get mature in God, Sister Adams, you can thank God for everything, including the devil. Because if, if, if the truth be told, uh, it was the devil that introduced you to God. I heard somebody say, I got so high one time. My God, that I it wasn't in church. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Didn't meet him in church. My God. I heard somebody say Tyson that they got so high one time. They never talked to God before. But in that moment, come on, in that devilish activity, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. They said God. 
God, if you get, if you let me come down, come on, I said, y'all ain't gonna talk. It was the devil that introduced some of y'all to God. Come on, it was that car accident. It was that crazy man, come on, that whooped you side your head that you didn't want to pray. But after you got done with him, after you, after you met him, Mike Knox, come on, you prayed whether you wanted to or not. Somebody said, young apostle, what is Mike Knox? You know, Mike Knox is Knox. That some of them might go down there again. They might not. Y'all ain't gonna talk. But it's some stuff that made you pray. You didn't pray on your own. Come on, y'all ain't gonna talk. You got in a hellacious situation. Huh? Come on, went to the hospital. Y'all ain't gonna talk. Got in trouble. Huh? Couldn't call on your doctor. Couldn't call your mama. Couldn't really call your daddy. You got under pressure. You got under hell's fire. You met confrontation. Huh? And it was your confrontation huh? that got you up out the bed uh, and said I got to find my way to church uh, the club came to it uh, this reefer came to it uh, Jack Daniels came to it uh, cause y'all ain't go talk uh, there's some things uh, that can't nobody do but God uh, there's some boys in your life that can't be filled with brown liquor it's got to be the blood of Jesus your hands open your mouth and say I thank God uh, that he used hell to get me to heaven uh, Y'all lift your hand, open your mouth, and say, I thank God for the ways that I came. Some of you didn't get saved in church. Ain't it something? How God, my God, drama, I might preach after a while, but ain't it something? How God, come on somebody, he ain't an alcoholic, but he ain't scared to get down in the bottom of your bottle to say, you done tried that, now try me, y'all ain't gonna talk. While you was dancing in the boom boom room, some of you had a visitation, you in the corner crying, come on somebody, why the other people, they in there dancing, but you in there crying, because when you got a call on your life, God ain't religious. He'll go to the club with you. Y'all ain't gonna talk. Some of you was in the bed fornicating and mess around and rolled over and met God. You got a conviction that says I'm better than that. You got something on the inside of you that said, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be here. It was God. Can I talk to you? About our force one. Our force one. There are some forces in the world that's so powerful until they will knock you off of your square. But that's one authentic power and sword. That's a force out here greater than the devil. And I told you that the devil is your adversary because he ain't God's. God don't got no adversary. All your life, your traditional churches always put God and the devil in the same category. That is not true. Show me my opponent. God, Air Force One, don't have no opponent. Get ready to show you something. It's in your Bible. The devil is your adversary. He ain't God's adversary. God don't got no adversary. God is a sovereign God. Going to go. The title of my message today is The Sovereignty of God. God is sovereign. You can read 66 books in your Bible. Oh, 13, 13, 13 is 79 there. Uh, that's some lost books they talk about, the Apocrypha. You can mess around and get that too. And guess what? You will never see God ever wrestling with the devil. God don't wrestle with the devil. The Bible said that, that, that demons, at his name, demons flee. They tremble. The devil is scared of God. I'm going to show you what God think about your devil that you always put next to him. The Bible said that there was a time where they called him the son of the morning or uh, Lucifer. He was the praise and worship leader. He worked for God. He still worked currently for God. He uses the devil. 
who is the devil when it comes down to God? A tool. And every now and then, he'll introduce you to that tool so that tool can point you in the right direction because without that tool, you a fool. <laughs> so one day, God wants to work on Job. So what did he do? He went and got that tool. He sent him down there. You can tell he the boss man because he gave him instructions. He told him what he could do and what he can't do. He said, go down there and touch everything that Job got he said to devil, what if I told you that in times of your life, you played the part of Job, and you wondered how the devil got there? What if I told you God sent the devil to you? Come on, somebody, so you can see him in a better way. You wouldn't believe that in your regular traditional mind, but if you just think about it, it make a lot of sense. God sent the devil to Job's house and said, touch everything he got, but don't touch his soul. You can tell God is the boss man because he played the devil. He made him make a fall trip, a blank trip. Don't you hate that when you have to make a blank trip? But look at God toying with the devil. He went down there, guess what? He returned back to God and said, I seen Joe, but I couldn't touch him. God said, why come you can't touch him, devil? He said, because you boss man, you got a hedge around him. He said, oh, I'm sorry, Joe. What I do, I let down the head so you can get in there. Come on. And guess what happened? Whenever before Posa, the devil Job was a rich man. He was a rich man. He was one of the richest men in the place of all. But after the devil then guess what? He was the most wealthiest man. That's a difference between riches and wealth because when you got riches come on somebody you won payment away from being broke but when you got wealth you got it generationally. Y'all ain't going to help me talk it here. What about Jesus when it came time for him to work his ministry? The Bible said that he was led away to the wilderness Come on, before Jesus ever met the 12 disciples, look at Jesus. He was led away in the wilderness. One spirit came from the devil that drove him, and the other one drug him. Before, come on somebody, Jesus encountered the devil. He was right there on ground zero. But wait a minute. Whenever you see Jesus, come on, after he rebuked the devil, the Bible said that the devil took him up on a high pinnacle and said, if thou be the son Son of God, uh, command these stones uh, to be made bread. Uh, Jesus looked at the devil uh, and said, tempt not. Come on, somebody. Uh, come on, the Son of God. Uh, he rebuked the devil. Uh, but wait a minute. How did Jesus uh, get to the mountaintop? Uh, the devil put him up there. Uh, and guess what? Uh, if you know God like I do, uh, when the devil come, uh, you better say, come on, somebody. It don't matter what you do. Uh, but one thing about it, uh, if God do send you to me, uh, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to leave uh, until I get my raise. Uh, some of y'all call him Lucifer. Some of y'all call him the devil. Uh, I call him the level uh, because every single time uh, you get ready to go to another place in God, uh, then guess what? Uh, God got to send you uh, the tester. Uh, you can't get nowhere without him. Uh, if come, you only go talk. Uh, you know what the devil didn't know? Uh, the devil, come on. Uh, he tried to trick Jesus, uh, but he what, what he did not realize uh, is that guess what? Uh, he was trying to deceive him. But in deceiving Jesus, trying to deceive Jesus, he deceived himself. He took Jesus higher. Y'all ain't gonna talk. He messed around and didn't realize that the scripture declared that if I be lifted up from the ground, I'll draw all men unto me. Look at your neighbor. Open your mouth and say for about five seconds, thank God for the devil. Thank God for the tester. Thank God for the sifter, because without the devil, you can't get to another level. Is there anybody that'll lift your hand, open your mouth, and shout glory? You sit down. I'm going to talk to you about the real Air Force One. The reason why God, good to see you, Trail. The reason why God, call a good church, I promise you all. The reason why God prompted me to teach this series is because he, this is a prophetic night. Lift your hand, Brother Curtis. Give him high. Brother 
Curtis Gimbal team this April with us for nine years. Followed me from Stone County to Falls. Thank you, Brother Curtis. He can testify as a witness of mine that six years ago, I believe it might have been somewhere around 2015, I came to church, Pastor Reynolds, and I told him that I saw a war happening. I said, I saw a disturbance happening specifically with Russia. In 2015, I went to Wiggins and I said, God showed me as if there were missiles falling out the sky. God also showed me that there would come a day where there would be a war that would take place on American soil. Those of you that were here, fast forward to New Year's. New Year's night. God allowed me to prophesy to tell you that, that now is the time to be found in the secret place. Told you that this is going to be a wonderful year. God bless you. God's going to do something for you and another lady in your family. While you're here, God's going to do something. There's an issue that's going on with, with in, in on your mother's side of the family with, with your blood. But God's going God's to touch him. Heal you today. You. Not only is God going to touch you, he's going to touch some people that's connected to you. As a side of you, what I'm telling you is the truth. Every now and then, you, like you get up out the bed sometime and you get dizzy. Like you don't feel quite like yourself at times. Every now and then, you deal with like a weakness and a shortness of breath. Lift your hands. While you're in this service, if you don't mind, lift your hands. While you're in this service today, I come to tell you that some of the things that's been plaguing you ain't going to plague you no more. Because you done came in contact with a force that the devil can't do nothing with. Come on, somebody say amen. I finished that. But listen, we was in here for New Year's. I'm sorry. We was in here for New Year's Day, night, rather. And I told y'all, it's time really to be found at the altar. And every time I came here for the prayer revival, I heard the word war. Do you understand? It's time now to be up on the house that can see. Scripture says, I do nothing in the latter day except I reveal it to my apostles and my prophets. Now, I told y'all New Year's Eve that there was a spirit of fear that was getting ready to hit this world like you ain't never seen before. Some of you think that the pandemic was something with everything that happened, but I come to tell you that sometimes that's a domino effect, first natural, then spiritual. Something God would allow you to encounter to show you that which is to come. I told you that even as uh, COVID-19 came to the world and emptied out the church. A lot of us that was a part of the church that's on staff, we preached to people through a cell phone. T.D. Jakes was in the Potter's house. Three people in there with him. People could not come in the doors of the church uh, because they were trying to buy, buy the CDC. Because there was an outbreak that was so contagious until you was uh, within six uh, feet from an individual. They can catch it, and if they're not careful, they could die. I told you that, whereas, hear me while I'm talking. I said, whereas, that was a spirit that came in here uh, that emptied out the church. There was something on the flip side that was getting ready to come and fill it up. See, you weren't going to have to beg people to come to church no more. Why? Because it was going to be feeling like David. You know what David said, Zelda Pippen? David said, come on, I was glad, Dr. Reynolds, when they said unto me, come on, let's go to Burger King, the mall, the nail salon, the beauty salon, the movie. Uh-uh, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But wait a minute, why did David say or utter such a thing? And we just quote 
folk stuff and we don't know who it come from, don't know the origin, don't know what was surrounding David, but David was in a place, come on somebody, where, where Saul was trying to kill him. Do you understand? He was under extreme pressure and the only place that David could find safety and refuge was the house of God. And I come to tell you that even after scripture said, darkness is getting ready to come upon the face of the deep. Gross darkness is getting ready to come upon the minds of the people for fear of seeing those things which are coming upon the world. See, some of you don't realize that you already living in the last days. Every sign that they were spoke about in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, all that stuff that happened, but we walk around with Rolex watches, Apple watches, a watch on the microwave, a watch on the television, in our car, watches everywhere, and don't you own a watch, you still don't got time. Do you understand? Time that was, ears no more. It's time now to be found in the place of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? God get me to get up people in this latter hour. Let's go say, if I be found, let me be found in the word. If I be found, don't let me be found high. If I be found, don't let me be found drunk. If I be found, don't let me be found in fornication. If I be found, let me be found in the word. Come on, I come to tell you that something may happen. And if we're not prepared, it's going to catch us off guard. In 2015 in a, on Central Avenue, I told him there's confrontation that's going to happen with Russia. It's on the news every day. Come on, somebody say amen. You can't, some of you might can't feel it now. But if you're not careful, as situations turn and point in our direction, there's such a spirit of fear that's getting ready to hit this world. Folk ain't going to know who to trust, where to go. Watch what I tell you. But I showed up here today in March to tell you that God have not given you the spirit of fear, but that of power, love, and a while other people going to be going crazy because you came and heard this word, you're going to have a sound. Somebody lift your hand and receive soundness of mind. Sound mind. Run over with me to Genesis 1 and 1. Now I got to teach. I got to show you something. I want to show you something. I want to show you the power of God. Some of us, I want to introduce you to your daddy. Some of you just been known your call to be a good call. I come to tell you that your daddy done some stuff in the other life. You don't know about that other stuff that your daddy did in his other life. But I want to show you another side to God. Look at somebody and whisper to him if you don't mind and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I want to let you in on the secret that there is another side to God. That's another side to God. God is soul. God ain't got some power. God got. God didn't make just some things. God made even the devil. I'm getting ready to show you something. See, if I tell you who God is, then automatically it's going to take the fear out of you because what you're getting ready to realize is that the devil don't run nothing, that God runs everything. I'm getting ready to show you. The book of Genesis, Genesis 1 and 1. The Bible says, in the beginning, who? Notice it didn't say God and the devil. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created. What did he create? Heaven and earth. The Bible says, and the earth was without form and void. Y'all hit me read, darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
The Bible said that something happened. Now look at this force. Force get ready. Air Force One, you get ready to see it move. The Bible said darkness on the face of the earth, earth of, of the deep and the spirit of God, look at this force, begin to move upon the face of the waters. The Bible said and God said, let there be what? Light and there what? The Bible said and God saw the light that it was what? And what did God do? God divided what? He didn't just fool with light. He fooled with the light and the. Some of us are afraid of the dark only because we do not really know God. He did not just divide the light, he also divided the what? And some of you, if you see darkness or if you experience darkness or if you encounter darkness, you swear, this ain't God. But every now and then, God being the father just that he is, he will cause you to be balanced. He'll give you enough good and also enough evil to make sure, come on somebody, that you are balanced in your walk. You're on a tightrope. And if y'all was God, this world would have lost existence a long time ago. You want to know why, Lady Reynolds? Some people don't like when it rains. When it rains, they say it pours. And what if you was God, Bishop? You know what many of us should do if we were God, uh, we would have all sunshiny days. Uh, we would never come on somebody or uh, uh, invite the rain in. How many people like to drive in the rain? By show of hands, you like to drive in the rain. Come on, Tyson said he do, but he the only hand I saw. Many people don't like the rain, uh, but you know what like God is? Uh, God is like that singing group from the 90s. Uh, sunny days come and everybody loves it, uh, but I want to know can you stand uh, the rain? Do you understand? Uh, God uh, Come on, it's so God. He won't just give you sunshiny days, but God is so God. He'll let you feel like it's raining. He'll let you know what it feels like to rain, to endure some rain, to endure some pain. Why would God do that? Why would God give you sunshine and rain? Some of you say, if I was God, every day I'd be like the Bahamas. Every day I'd be a sunshiny day. But let me show you the mind of God and your mind together. I'm going to let you know that if every day was a sunshiny day uh, where the sun shines come out. Uh, the sunshine comes from the sun. Uh, the sun is a star that's so hot uh, that if the sun would uh, shine every day, uh, then guess what? You couldn't live uh, because a seed goes in the ground. Uh, it needs sunshine uh, and it needs rain to grow. Uh, if it had all sunshine uh, and no rain, uh, no heartache, no pain, uh, you would have crops to be able to eat. Uh, but God is so wise. Uh, he'll give you what you don't like. Like, uh, come on somebody uh, to make sure uh, you can live uh, to see another day uh, y'all uh, ain't gonna help me preach up in here but when I get out of here uh, you gonna thank God for the sun uh, you gonna thank God for the rain uh, you gonna be like David uh, David said one day I signed a contract uh, with the Lord uh, that said I will bless the Lord uh, at all times uh, whether it's raining uh, whether it's not uh, whether I got hired uh, whether I got I'm fired. I'll bless him at all time. And his praise shall continually, if you were God, the human race as we know it would cease to exist because you would give this earth only what it wants instead of what it needs. And thank God that he let you experience some darkness. Thank God in certain seasons of your life that God allowed you to experience death. Some of the darkness that we experience humbled us. Where would you be without dark days? You wouldn't have a prayer life. If you didn't encounter no darkness. Me, I'm getting ready to show them who God really is. 
Isaiah chapter number 45. I want to show you the sovereignty of God. My daddy was a hit man. Bell the Pittman, if he was a hit man, and I was his son, I ain't afraid of the sound of the gun because I know who holy. That's my daddy. Y'all ain't going to help me. And what I do know about my father is that he got the son in mind. He got the daughter in mind. He's a good, good father. <coughs> He's so good that he will give you the proper balance of light and darkness, good and evil, to keep you on the beaded path. He is the sovereign God, the ultimate Air Force One. Isaiah says, I am the Lord. And there is none else. Be not mistaken about it. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. And some of us worship, but we do not know what we worship. But he says that, why? He said that ye may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. He says, I am who? The Lord. And there was what? He says, I formed and I also created. something? I didn't just form life. I'm the ultimate chef bar or G. I can mix some ingredients in the, in the, in the climate of your life that from the natural eye don't look like it go together. But it's going to make a masterpiece. Tyson, I won't tell you something. I don't like onions. But if they ain't sauteed on that steak right, I won't even eat it. So for those of you that are cake lovers, I'm going to show you the mind of God or a system of God. Now, you'd never know what the cake had to go through to, to end up on your table. Then you ate the cake and you said like God, it is good. But he put some egg yolk in that, in that, in the batter of your cake. Y'all ain't going to talk. And guess what some of you probably would never do? You would never mix an egg with a cake. In your right, in my right mind, I wouldn't put an egg, come on, in no cake batter. To me, it makes no sense. And some of you don't even eat eggs sunny side up. Do you understand? But somebody who know what they doing, uh, come on, that understands the process uh, of whenever this thing is over with, uh, they'll put two and three eggs right on top of each other. And some of you, you experience something in your life that didn't seem like it went together. How is it uh, that I got a promotion uh, one day uh, and on the same day they called me uh, and told me that somebody was sick? Y'all ain't going to talk uh, have you ever lived life in between two extremes? Have you ever been between a rock and a honey place in your life? It sounds like God to me because if you had too much of the right, you would tilt over. But he got to put left and right to make a tight rope that you can follow. God got to show you that can't nobody bring you out but me. God got to show you that the way up with God is down. And some of you, you know what? You know what I learned how to do, Pastor King? I learned how to dance in the rain. I learned how to dance with tears running down my eyes. I learned how to preach under pressure. I learned how to preach under pain. I learned how to rejoice in my iniquity because I knew God. I would like some of y'all that just thank God when it's good. Come on, I 
praise God, right through a public divorce, I praise God, right through scandal, I praise God through it all, because I haven't understood it. What kind of understanding did you have that the way up with God is down? You always know how high a skyscraper is going to be in New York City, by how low they dig it in the ground. And some of y'all, you've been in a low place. You better shout. You've been in a low place. You better rejoice. You've been in a low place. You better praise God because I come to tell you when it's all over, when it's all said done, you might was last, but for first, it's going to be last. In the last, it's going to be first. You might was last, but I come to tell you if you ever been low before, there's another side to, to low. It's called high. Lift your hands, open your mouth, and shout, God! It's taking you to a high place. But before you get exalted, he got to purge you and let you know what humility is like. And you can't know humility without knowing humiliation. Jesus was humiliated. They spat on him. He asked for water. They gave him vinegar. Our risen Savior soon come and see. They put a crown of thorns on his head. He was mocked by mere men. He was humiliated. He humbled himself to the death of the cross. And before he got to a high place, he had to be humiliated first. Sometimes God will let you go through humiliation. Everybody know your business. Everybody knew what you went through. Everybody saw your laceration. God sent you to a dark place. Let you experience a low place. Because he's getting ready to take you somewhere. And if you're going to stay there, Paul, you got to learn how to be in a bound and a base. Paul said, I know what it's like. I'm good to eat at the king's table. At the same time, I'm not above spam. Pardon me, sardine, Vianney sausage, Raymond noodles, the chicken flavor. Y'all ain't gonna talk. God would give you in your life a mixture of things just to make sure that you're properly balanced for where you go. Somebody whisper and say, God, he is the sovereign God. I form life. Watch this. I created darkness. Oh, my goodness. He said, I make peace. And at the same time, I'll create evil. He says, I, the Lord, do it what? Not the devil, but God. Can I show you the two faces of God? He made Israel a promise that I'm going to bring you out with a mighty and an outstretched hand. Y'all remember that? Well, that was a generation that grew, Zelda Pippin, that you did not know the God of their fathers. They only knew his actions. They wasn't acquainted with his ways. So what did God do? He came up with a plan. It was a 40-year plan. Through the wilderness. Just so he could show a generation that did not know him who he was. So what did God do on one hand? On one hand, God raises up Moses. This is the part that you're going to play most. I'm going to call you the great deliverer. I'm going to let your mama put you in a basket, send you float down the Nile River, let you live in Pharaoh's house so you can learn his tactics, his ways, his customs, just so you can go back to Egypt to free your people. On one hand, God raises up 
Moses. I make peace, I create evil. On the other hand, that same God raises up Pharaoh. Watch this. Moses on one hand, Pharaoh on another. The children of Israel is in the middle. These are the people, and I'm not just going to show my actions. I'm going to show them my ways. I'm going to take them 40 years uh, to introduce myself to them the right way, but I got to make sure that the stage is set just right. So I'm going to create tension and friction between Moses, uh, a Pharaoh, and the children of Israel. On one hand, God says, watch this, on one hand, God say, Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Y'all read. On the same hand, Pastor King, before Moses can get to Pharaoh, another scripture said that was an evil spirit from the Lord that came and hardened Pharaoh's heart. So whenever Moses got to Pharaoh, there would be tension. And when Moses went down there to Pharaoh, and said, let my people go, guess what? Pharaoh said, no. Why? He had a hard heart. But Pharaoh could not help his hard heart because it came from God. Then look at God that played. Now he finna go, go to Moses. Now I'm getting ready to show you something. I'm getting ready to send 10 plagues down through Egypt. <laughs> he said, I'm getting ready to do some stuff. He created all of this dramatic popping stance. Flexing his muscles just to show a generation that don't know him who he is. What is the prophet? The prophecy is, I'm going to bring y'all out with a mighty and an outstretched hand. If there's no conflict, there's no resolution. So he has to create the conflict. Come on, somebody, so, so there can be a resolution so that the people can see him as the solution uh, and know him uh, like they fathers did. So he had to create a dramatic plot just to show these people who he was. Y'all ain't going to talk. Look at somebody and say, God is sovereign. Now look at somebody and say, did you ever know your daddy was like that? Some of you wouldn't believe it. That's why I had to buy this big old screen and put these big old scriptures on this screen so you can see what the Bible says. I make the peace. I create the evil. I the Lord done all these things. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 29. It ain't just on the screen. It's in your Bible too if you read it. See now that I even I am he and there is no God with me. He says I do what? Uh oh some of you didn't want to say it. He said I kill. He said not only do I kill he said what I'll do. He said I make a lie. He said with the same power he said I will allow a wound. I wound and then I do what? I heal. He said, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. God is a sovereign God. Well, I, I'm showing you God's power, showing you God's might, showing you God's mind. But guess what? If God is running all of this, what is the devil running? Why should I fear the devil if God got this much power? So it may be some stuff that happened in my life that I don't understand. But what I do know is that no matter what's going on, pandemic or not, war or not, there's never ever a time when God is off the throne. Some people be panicking because they don't know God. Some people are under fear because they don't know God. When 
the Bible says that perfect love cast out all fear. I love God so much, I know he's my father. And my father will never put no more on me than I'm able to bear. Come on. I know my daddy is a good, good father. He's so good, he won't let me be born with a silver spoon in my mouth. And don't have responsibility. But he's so good, Brother Robert, that he'll test me just to bless me. And if I can pass the test, I can stand to be blessed. My God, I feel like teaching in my house. Do you understand? That's what type of God we serve. So guess what? Every now and then, he'll send you some tribulation. Every now and then, he'll send you some distraught. Every now and then, he'll send you some stuff that you don't understand. But at that particular point in your life, you've got to adopt the spirit of Job. Job said, the way that I take, I don't know. I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through. I don't know why I went through a divorce. I don't know why I didn't die in a car accident. I don't know why. Come on, God didn't let me lose my mind. I don't know why. Come on, somebody, I had to walk around. Come on, with a limp. I don't know why I had to wrestle with an angel. I don't know why, Paul, I had to be blind for three days. I don't know why they put me in the lion's den. But one thing that I do know, and if God put me in it, he got enough to bring me out. One thing I do know is that the way that I take, I don't know, but when I'm trying, I shall come forth as pure as cold. Come on, somebody. Every now and then, you got to be tried. Every now and then, you got to be tested. Every now and then, God will send you a pot quiz. But that's all right, because tribulation, working patience, patience, working experience, experience, working hope, and hope makes me not to be ashamed of what I had to go through to get right here. Lift your hand and say, I thank God. Can you see God? Can you see his power? Can you see his might? Job said, I'm going through something right now, Brother Robert. He said, but one thing I do know, when I come out of this, I'm going to be better. Some of you just need God to be a good God. But you've never experienced or met the sovereignty of God. David was the apple of God's eye because they had a relationship. They had an established relationship. And one thing that Job could say and speak on his own account as it relates to his relationship with God, he says, I've been young and now I'm old. And what I learned about that he says, I ain't never seen the righteous be forsaken. Neither the seed begging bread. One scripture says that as it relates to the righteous, that he wouldn't leave their soul in what? Hell. Never say that you wouldn't go. Just promise that he wouldn't Some of you have been through hell up until this point. But the hell you went through in 2014 ain't the hell you're going through in 2022. What happened to your hell? He delivered you out of it. While I'm talking crazy, I keep on talking crazy. What if I told you that hell is a temporary place? Some of you have been through hell and got out. Jesus Christ went to hell, preached a revival, and got out. Resurrection Sunday is coming. Not only did he get out, there was some folk in there that got out with him. Hell is temporary, but the lake of fire is eternal. <coughs> How many people getting something out of this word? If I understand the mind of God, if I understand the orchestration of God, it leaves me in a place where I'm not fearing anything that happens because I know that God is in complete and total control. 
People running scared even now. Talking about this stuff that we are dealing with is out of hand. How can anything be out of hand? Just because it's out of your hand don't mean it ain't out of God's hand. While I'm talking crazy, I keep on talking crazy. Yes, yes. That was a pandemic that happened in the children of Israel's day. Killed everything. Every firstborn child. That was a pandemic of death and blood. Who caused it? God sent it. God sent the pandemic. In the Bible, it's in your Bible. He sent a plague of death, locusts, lice, frogs. Who sent it? God sent it because of the children disobedient. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I don't care if they mind. How you know God did it? He said, y'all get ready. Go in the house. It's the Passover that we celebrate. What we celebrate in the Passover, the fact that he passed over my house. Somebody said, praise God. He said, a pandemic is coming. Death getting at the rain like you ain't never seen before. He said, in this city, there's a pandemic that's getting ready to happen. He said, I'm getting ready to kill every firstborn son. He says, but for you that will obey me, God will always have a refuge for the people that have an ear to hear him. It was death happening all over the place. But guess what? It's some people that live. You want to know why? Because they obeyed God. Go in the house, shut the door, put blood on the doorpost. He, you know he was the, the trigger man because he said in scripture, and when I see the blood, I'll pass over your house. Y'all ain't going to help me talk up in here. Look at your neighbor sitting there. Something getting ready to happen. I'm getting ready to walk out of here in confidence. I'm getting ready to walk out of here. And I'm not going to have any fear. I'm getting ready to walk out of here. And I'm going to possess perfect love because I'm going to get an understanding that this world belongs to President. If you don't obey God, he'll erase you too. Because he is the God that pulls down one that he may establish another. Y'all ain't going to talk. He is God like that. Some of you didn't know you were coming to hear this type of word today. Some of your eyes is bucked right now. Some of you got buck eyes right now. You still trying to come around. I showed this in the scripture. He said, I did all of that. Who caused that pandemic to happen? God caused that pandemic. And he wasn't just a pandemic of death. They had frogs and lice and all that stuff. God did that just to show some people who he was. If my people who are called by my name would do what? I heal your land. Guess what? If I got an access code to a lock, guess what I can do if, it, if I own the lock? I can open it. I can lock it and unlock it. Is that right? Well, guess what? If I caused it, I know how to bring it to a cease. He said, but I ain't going to stop nothing until you humble yourself. Come back to me, and I'll call the dogs off. Then I hear your cry, your prayer, and heal your. It was God's doing. But Robert. Some folks don't know what to think of what I'm preaching. Proverbs 16 and 4. Is it up there? One more scripture, soft music, and I'm gone. It ain't up there. It's in your Bible. Proverbs 16 and 4. Well, I'll tell you what, Romans 13 and 1. Is it up there? Let every soul be subject unto him. Ultimate half force one. Let every soul be subject to the higher power. For that is, help me with this. 
but of God. The powers that be are, are made by God. That means if something breaks out, it needs God's permission. And there has to be a systematic reason why it's happening. But hey, Daniel, don't be like everybody else that's running scared. Well, you see death, catastrophe, calamity. You know what I need you to do? I need you to be spiritual enough to seek me so that you can be one of the ones that can read the handwriting on the wall. Something is coming. Let me be the first to tell you. That's going to run people into the house of God like never before. But the spirit that's going to be bribing them is going to be secure. But as it relates to you, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. He says, fear not. You know what? Some of you, my God, you, y'all stand up because I got to go. Please, if you stand up, I'll make this. Don't walk on out. I got to cut this off. See, I got to, I can't keep this up. Most of us are afraid to do. The greatest fear in life, what is it? What is it? It's death. See, the devil is plaguing your mind with what? Death. But God created death too. And the worst thing you think can happen to you is, you, is if you die. But guess what? When it came down to his only begotten son, he was born just to die. Some of you are scared of death when Paul said you're supposed to die every day. Can I blow your mind? Some are so cold and we scared to die. But what if I told you that death ain't a period? It's a comma. That there's life after death. That's eternal life. And some of you think that the worst thing can happen to a person is if they die. For many people, that's the best thing to happen. I'm on my way out of here, but I prophesied to a girl, Curtis. I prophesied to Tina and Wiggy. And, and God gave me a word for her. Granddad. And her mother was in the and she was praying to God that God would let her mother live I lifted her off I said this is a miracle scene watch this Pastor King she gave the seed with tears in her eyes she said, Pastor, I want you to pray that for my mother to be healed. Took the seed, put the seed in the offering, stretched out my hands. I heard God says that I'm going to give her mother a divine healing. Did you hear what I said? I had a confidence mother. I had a blessed assurance that God was going to heal this girl's mother. Simone Davis, I heard God tell it to me. I was on my way riding down the street in Hattiesburg. Somebody called my phone, Mother dear, and they told me that her mother passed away. I was so confused. I said, God, I know your voice. I know you told me that you was going to heal her mother. God replied to me and said, I did. I said, how did you heal her if the woman passed away? He said, what did I tell you to tell her? I said, I remember you telling me to tell her that God was going to give her a divine healing. God said, what? 
I said, I remember you told me to tell her that you was going to give her a divine healing. He says, I did. He says, in order for me to give her a divine healer, healing, I had to take her to a divine place. He said, if I'd have healed her like her daughter and you wanted her to be healed, she'd have been sick again. He said, but when I healed her, what I do, I do forever. He said, I healed her once and for all. He said, in order for me to get a woman a divine healing, he said, I had to take her to a divine place. He said, guess what? She ain't sick no more. And she'll never be sick again. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, I thank you right now for what you're doing. God, I have an understanding that my thoughts and your thoughts is as far as the east is from the west. It's as far as the north is from the south. But God, even in these last days, give us to be a people that have access to your mind. You said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who thought in that rivalry to be equal with God, but humbled himself to the death of the cross and died and rose again on our behalf. Lord, I thank you right now for granting me an understanding on who you really are. You are a sovereign God. Thank you for being sovereign. Thank you, God, for giving me to come into the knowledge of who you truly are. God, Give me not to be an individual that fall to fear. But give me to fall into understanding, fellowship, and communication with you like never before. Thank you that the powers that be are of God. And God, if you did, if you sent Jesus to a hellish place, Give us the understanding that you only sent him through hell to get to heaven. Even us in our lives, we may face tragedy and calamity. But God, give us to see you in it. Lord, you said that fear not the man that's able to destroy just the shell of a man. Fear not the man that can destroy the body. But feel the man that can destroy the body and send the soul to hell. Thank you right now that you're causing us, drawing us closer like never before. How many people want to know God in a better way? Thank you, God, for wisdom. Thank you for revelation. Thank you that you're causing me, giving me an understanding that there's a method to, to the madness. I'm going to tell you something that some of you might can't receive. This is a temporary place. Pilgrims passing through. Everything that can, I can see is only temporary. Those things that can't be seen with the naked eye are eternal. Truth be told, that light down here is a vapor. Can be here today and gone tomorrow. This is a place of practice and preparation. While you got time to practice, while you got time to prepare, prepare because this world is not our home. Some of us are mourning over people that is now in the bosom of Abraham. Give me an understanding. If God don't give me an understanding, I won't have one. I mourn when I'm supposed to be rejoicing. Thank you for the wisdom of God. Might be somebody in this building right now that says, Lord, I want a greater fellowship with you. Paul said, I count everything I know as done that I may apprehend that which have apprehended me. Maybe there's somebody that said, Lord, I'm in a backsliding condition, a black backsliding position. And I've been convicted over the last few weeks, months, days. I'm going to let you know that this moment is for you. Maybe there's an individual in this place that 
is seeking salvation. Done life your way all of your life. Life, how you need, uh, coming to the understanding that you need God is direction and that of a Savior. This moment is for you. Baby, there's somebody that's looking for a church home full of faith, full of power that can guide you into the ways of, of, of this world, of this life, from here to eternity. This moment is for you. If you fall in any one of those categories, the altars is open. Lord, I thank you right now for a word called restoration. Lord, I thank you even now, Lord, before next week for a word called revival. Revive her heart, revive her soul, touch her mind, Jesus. Lord, I thank you even now that you moving on her behalf. Touch her right now, God, where she needs to be touched. Heal her, Lord God, in the embers of her life that commands healing. Lord, I thank you right now that the Spirit of God is transferable. And I appreciate you even now for an impartation that even the adversary can't take from her. There's something breaking off of your mind even now. I counsel every spirit of inadequacy that calls you to be part of your identity in God. I give it back to you right now. Yes, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Lift your hands, Sister Nikki. I thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you in this moment. God told me to tell you that you're this close. That's something that you've been asking God for that a man can't give to you. You've been saying, Lord, I need to hear you. I need to touch you. I need to feel you. God told me to tell you that you're this close. That's something that you've been petitioning the throne of grace for. For the last five months, that's something that's been weighing heavy on your heart that you've been bringing to God. But as of yet, you haven't seen any result. God told me to tell you that there's no time like the present for that which you've been asking God for. God told me to tell you that you can get ready to receive it even now. Yes, Lord, receive. Lift them hands and receive. Receive what God got for you. Come on, somebody, help her praise. Help her worship. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For God is now under thee with a broken and a contrite heart. Oh, I'm a God. Second, I'm a God. Yes, Lord, I thank you now. I feel it right now. I said, I feel it right now. I feel it right now. Touch her, Lord. Heal her, Lord. Restore right now in the name of Jesus. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your will. Yes, Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, I don't know what she has needed of, but you do. God, I thank you right now. Touch her even now. Lord, even in the secret chambers of her life, God calls her to know you. Calls her to know you in an even deeper way. You've been seeking something from the Lord. God told me to tell you, seek and ye shall find. Knock. And the door shall be open. Ask. And it shall be given unto you. Thank you right now that those inquisitive questions that you've been asking without an answer, God told me to take it that the month of June shall be a month of answers for you, say it the Lord. For even you have been petitioning God in the nighttime season concerning episodes of your life previously. God told me to tell you that today he's getting ready to come in and suck with you like never before. That's an area of your soul that needs healing. Sometimes you walk and people don't realize that the things that you've been through, even certain traumatic experiences that you have endured, 
God told me to tell you that it is not for nothing. For there's a ministry on the inside of you. It's getting ready to come forth. And the devil been trying to stop you, been trying to block you, been trying to keep you in a stuck place. But I come to tell you today that the adversary got to lose his hold off of your destiny right now. Lord, I thank you right now that the time on this certain event is over with God sent a blessing her way. Send a miracle her way right now in Jesus' name. Hug me, squeeze me tight. Squeeze me Just tight. Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you said that you are now unto them with a broken and a contrite heart. With a broken and a contrite spirit, Lord Jesus. Lord, anoint this modern day church. Lord, to be able to receive what you're bringing in. God, give us a yoke destroying anointing. Lord, God, that is able to break off addictions. Lord, give us a I thank you even now. Praise you even now. Lord God, that if, if, if any man be in Christ, Lord, that he or she is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are becoming new. Lord, if you did something one time, you can do it again. For God that we serve is a miracle worker. Do it one more time. I thank you even now. Touch up from the crown of her head from the crown of her head to the sole of her very feet Lord rock her in the cradles of your heart Lord lead her guide her into the path of righteousness and restore her soul even now I thank you right now for breakthrough for breakthrough I thank you right now for breakthrough yes Lord stretch your hands toward this woman Lord I thank you Jesus Lord, for the burden that you're placing on our hearts, Lord. Lord, to seek and save those. Lord, I thank you. Lord, for leading her to this place. Lord, I thank you even now that you covered her. Even now. God told me to tell you, lift your hands. God told me to tell you, he's getting ready to use you like never before. says in the book of Joel that a revival going to take place. He says your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men are going to have dreams and see visions. Even now I speak that of transformation over her. People around you don't even realize some of the things you encountered on your own. I see something happen one night. That a plan went wrong and you could have lost your life. But God said it was me that spared your life. I'm even looking at a car accident or something that happened that also could have, could have, could have ended your life. But God told me to tell you that I spared you up. Showing you some things. 
God told me to tell you that you're not ordinary, that you are chosen. Ain't there somehow some of the children that God allowed us to have? You can always tell who God going to use because they pay off. It's always a little different. God told me to tell you that your course is not a curse. God going to do some things in your life. See something happen. It broke your heart like it was a man that was in your life that you looked up to. Something happened with this individual and it's like it tried to hurt your heart against this man. God told me to tell you that he get ready to mend your broken heart and get ready to bring you into a place of wholeness, said the Lord. Go in peace and believe God from this day forward. God's going to do something in your life. Amen. Lift your hands if you're in this building. You thank God for saving you. You thank God for delivering you. You thank God that God does something in your life. Even in shelter, God told me to tell you that he is pleased with your progress. Sometimes it's as if you get to yourself and you want to know, God, how do you feel about me? What do you think of me? God told me to tell you that he's pleased even now with your progress. That's some things you've been asking God to do in your life. Slowly but slowly, surely, he's been proving himself to you. It's like you heard for years of God that everybody else talk about. From a child, you've been inquisitive about this God. But it's like as, as of now, God is calling you into fellowship and relationship with him like never before. Now you can say, I know him for myself. And something that you've been praying about concerning your daddy, God told me to tell you that he heard you when you prayed. I said he told me to tell you that he heard you when he prayed. God is a great big God. God can do anything. But sister, I found out that there's one thing that God can't do. You know what it is? He can't fail. God can't fail. Somebody put your hands together all over this field. All over this building. Shake my hand, D. I'm shaking a miracle in your hand. I thank God that because of your heart, God told me to tell you that the oil of progression is going to be upon you. Man, it's like you in a place where you content, but at the same time, you ain't really been satisfied with your finances. God told me, don't worry about it. And I'm a leg lady down beer, and we're so excited about our new DP Nation app. And guess what? It's free. And it's available now on all of your Apple and Android devices. So head on over and download it now and let's stay connected.
lackadaisical here in this sanctuary and you look like you're born out of your mind you look and I can make this declaration God will affirm because he watches over his word to perform it but you do not become skilled simply waiting till you get to church in front of people to act like it skill is developed when nobody's there and come on am I talking to anybody skill is the, it's your willingness to put in the work when nobody is watching you if you think that your calling will exempt you from work you are in the wrong mood baby I have I you got to say, Lord, I don't understand it, but I believe you. I don't understand it. I can't make no sense out of it. I've been fighting with it for the last few months. I can't make heads or tails, but one thing I do, I believe God. Anybody in here ever had to walk by faith and not by sight? Come on here. Hallelujah. Shout glory, shout glory, shout Jesus! Hold up, wait a minute. Don't leave just yet. I'm Assistant Pastor John Trail Hill. And I'm Lady Quinitria Hill. And whether you join us in-house or online, we would like to thank you for joining us for an awesome worship experience. We would like to also invite you to follow us on all social media platforms. And remember, when I say unto one, I say unto all, we, we do, do have, have dominion, dominion 